And we can flick over to, like, if you have any, if we want to see any YouTube videos or any show off anything. No, you don't have internet. We can anymore. flick over here. Oh, no, we don't. But I can, um, it's I, don't okay. know, I don't have my phone. So. <laughs> All right, All okay. right, welcome guys back to the one of the number, n number what? Number 24, 26 of the Opash podcast. That says 26, has there been 26? So you really know that for a fact. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing the introduction. No, well, for sure. Patty. 26, we have Mr. Patty today. Patty! <laughs> A.K.A. Gerger, A.K.A. You've got a multiple uh, range of names. <laughs> uh -huh. And in a man of your business, I guess that's uh, part of the... Part of the package? Yeah, you could put it that way. <laughs> tell us what you do. And tell us why... Well, introduce uh, yourself, man. I, people know who I am. They don't need me to introduce. Hey, hey everyone. Um, it's me again. You can see and we're here again. in um, <laughs> we're here in Budapest shooting. Budapest shooting EU. This is on Najma Zoo. And this is actually... Um, it's fairly new. And I thought it would be the perfect setting to talk to you, Paddy. Because you are an arms dealer. Yes, correct. Uh, you could, well, an arms dealer, an arms manufacturer. Um, that's a what legal I do. one. Not a le yes, a legal Mission. licensed. I used to, yes, exactly. This is one of the things that I run into all the time when people ask me what do I do for a living. I say I'm an, uh, I am I manufacture and sell firearms. Everyone is like, oh, really? Wow. And yeah. then I have to say licensed for hunters, sports shooters, and uh, other interested parties. What do you think is the stereotype of an arms dealer? Uh, as an arms dealer that you've heard of, uh, I think uh, it's um, I think it's kind of a dark character who operates in the shades. That's that's how yes I, yes yes that's that's how I would imagine an arms dealer, and uh, that's how most people who I've encountered imagine an arms dealer. You and know how I imagine an arms dealer? What he works for the cartels. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the I'll I'll come back to that in one second. Yeah. But the cartel. Uh, let, let me say that right away. The cartel have their own engineers and arms manufacturers working for them they are a lot more professional than you would than you would they don't need to buy anything they can make it themselves it's Oi. it's absolutely crazy money talks, they would have the money to do it so they do why, why? they they hire the best people they have no problem hiring the best engineers the best whatever so so they would headhunt then i imagine they in your, if you were the best of your area you're in it Tell us, things, tell yeah. us what you do. All right. Yes. Well, um, I am, uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm an arms dealer. I have an arms manufacturing company. And, uh, yeah, we manufacture uh, rifles for uh, sport shooters, hunters, and, again, other interested parties. Um, yeah, we have a plant here in Budapest where we manufacture mostly. Yeah. We have, and I thought it was out in the sticks, but it's actually in town. It's actually in town. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you're gladly invited there, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for that. Uh, yes, uh, only him. Okay, you can. Come. <laughs> <laughs> you can come. No, 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 it's leave a good, it's a good start. Just leave a good start. Out of it. Just in case, I don't trust him. We've been paintballing together. He's, he does some dirty moves. He popped out of a car. You know that there was a wreck, a wreck car there. Uh huh. And he's probably played enough COD that he thinks strategically. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Was it you who popped out of the boot of the car? No, it was me. Uh, Headshot, man. man. <laughs> so you, you um, mainly rifles? Mainly rifles, yes. We also deal in handguns, but that's a small part of our business. We like to focus on what we do best, which is manufacturing rifles, AR-style rifles, the AR-15. Which what's that? Because what's, I'm a complete novice. An assault rifle. Assault rifle. Uh, uh, that's a very common misconception. Ah, um, ha, ha, ha. Yes. AR what is an AR? Assault rifle. No, that stands for Armalite rifle, which is the menu, which is the uh, developer and the original manufacturer uh, was called Armalite, uh -huh. and they d developed this rifle as the AR-15. Um, Armalite rifle again. Uh, assault rifle is defined as a rifle, a, a light of of, uh, of guns. Mm, 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 a a, a subcategory of of rifles. Mid range. It's a, yes, correct. It's a it's a, a category of guns, um, long guns that, and this is the most important part that are fully automatic. O uh, that are fully automatic. Usually they have a switch from semi to fully automatic. Uh -huh. But the fully automatic part is an integral part of the definition of an assault rifle. Okay. So an assault rifle is a light. Uh, light rifle that can shoot fully automatically that has an intermediate cartridge that means they are um, that means that it's not as powerful as a normal rifle cartridge but more powerful than a pistol cartridge for example uh -huh. because uh, the Germans and also other forces in World War II they discovered that combat doesn't go on at 300 meters uh, as they first thought it goes on from one house to another so it's uh. a few meters and they discovered that uh, what the Germans had as a machine pistol, um, which is basically a short, small, 
uh, rifle type deal. That is, uh, that Pyre's pistol cartridges is not strong enough, but their rifle is overpowered, too heavy, and the ammunition is too heavy. They needed something in the middle, and so the intermediate cartridge was born. That's and this is where this is your uh, like your specialties in that type of uh, weaponry. Yes, of correct. Armor. We make them as we make them as semi-automatics for sport shooters and hunters, mm -hmm. and we make them as fully automatics if other dealers are interested. For example, if uh, like the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> well, come back but to no, my question though. Yes, like yeah, 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 yeah. Hungry, If you were, wait a second, if you if so if you were the best at your what you did. Yes. It's not uncommon for illegal entities like mafia cartels to headhunt these people. I'm sure about that. I have never received any... I don't know anyone who works in that kind of field. <laughs> I'm on the purely legal side of business, but I assume that that's how it works. Wow. That's how I would do it if I were a criminal organization. I wow. would want the best for, yeah. for my people. Sure, but you, did, you know, in Hungary, you're allowed to carry guns, but you need a special permit. Well, funny we should bring that up because... I, I met you coming into... Because I wanted to buy uh, one of these rubber bullet guns. Yes. Because I wanted something that looked scary, didn't mm -hmm. kill anyone, Yes. but would have would be self-defense. Yes. I was doing, um, and I still am, but it's kind of wrapping up now, the documentary on Nepson House uh, mm -hmm. the, about the homeless folks. And I've been stick, sick of people kind of like nearly taking stuff of mine and never really got into any trouble. And I think it was a bit overkill, but that's where we met. Mm -hmm. And um, when I did mention I was uh, I purchased a gun, Everyone lost their fucking minds. They were like, "Okay, so you you know, you know that there are laws here. You can't just do that. You get in a lot of trouble." Mm -hmm. But they don't actually know what they are. That's correct. So can we just like, because you told me everything in that shop. Yes. And it was very. It was actually quite well, clear cut. It. When I heard it the first time, I was like, I didn't believe it. A dime of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had bought a baby gun. <laughs> in Australia, you couldn't do this. Of yes. But what's the, but what's the and and the, this is the same. Um, I think this is the same. Well, is it the same ruling of me buying this gun with rubber bullets compared to a real gun? No, it's completely different. Right, I'm so going to start up with the rubber bullets yep, first because yep. that's what's available to the regular citizen. Every citizen in Hungary who is 18 years of age is per, uh, is allowed to purchase himself a uh, a blank firing firearm um, or a or a blank firing firearm which is also capable of firing rubber bullets, which is so either a blank that would shoot nothing but make a loud make scary so, noise, yeah. yes, or some, a, a rubber bullet. I would I would uh, I would say not nothing because it shoots hot gases and at short distances those they can, can still be deadly. One of those uh, uh, a um, a a purely gas shooting gun. Mm -hmm. If you uh, if you attach it to someone's head and pull the trigger, you could easily kill them with that. Uh, okay. Yes. So right. in close distances, they are quite dangerous. Right. The and rubber bullet ones. No, no this, this is blanks. not even the rubber bullet. Just this is blanks. just a blanks one. If you push it against someone's against someone's skull, for example, and pull the trigger, you could kill them with that. It's they're not oh. the the gas pressures are quite intense. They're actually higher. And they're legal. Yes. To, for every single citizen that is above eighteen. Yes. To purchase. And the rubber bullets. Yes. And um, the uh, it actually the, the pressures of these are higher than some of the some of the real guns, so they have quite substantial pressure mm. um, uh, coming out the barrel. Um, a, a subcategory of this is the guns that are designed in a way they are blank shooters, but they're designed in a way where you can fit a rubber bullet in the front of the of the cylinder, and then it will shoot out the rubber bullet with uh, substantial force. It will not be enough to kill anyone. But it will be enough exactly for what you are intending to use it for self defense. Mm, mm. Um, and the injuries, the extent of these injuries from a rubber bullet, is it, it, is, it, is, it is it really just bruising? Uh, it's bruising. I mean, obviously, well, it, it not, not including yeah, well, shooting someone depends. in the eye, for example. I, I imagine that rib, would be. You might break him a rib. If you, if you, I think if you held it up to to someone's rib cage really close, it might break a rib. Other than that, it's r intense. I'm going to say intense bruising. Have you been shot with a rubber bullet? No, never. <laughs> have you been shot at all? I have never <laughs> been shot. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been shot. No, uh, it's really painful, mate. I think I have you've a, been shot by I have a rubber bullet. Who got shot? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, none of the paintballs they, they can sting. <laughs> no, for sure. It's 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 uh. It takes a lot of time for your brain to process it. For example, if you shoot in your hand, you you're gonna f you're not gonna feel instant pain because your brain cannot recall it. You know, so it takes time for you to acknowledge that you've been shot in the hand. So you're like, I what imagine what the fuck I just happened. I imagine and then you have a hole in your fucking hand. I imagine if you if if I was shot mm -hmm. with a rubber bullet blank, mm -hmm. the the fear factor, especially if you don't know. Of, of hearing the noise, seeing the, the, the flare, and feeling the impact, mm -hmm. I think your mind in that moment would actually... Piss. Would, would, a real, would, would think that it's a real bullet. Therefore, the experience would be 
just as terrifying. The, of I, course, if the person is not aware of it. If yeah. You, if, like you said, self-defense. If like, someone, a thief, comes and trying to rob you, you'd be like, thing, and you just shoot, and he's like, it might happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it could be scary. Basically, um, the, the experience from getting shot with a rubber bullet in the first few seconds, I assume, I have never been shot, thank God. I have never had to why, use... Why, why don't you try it? Like, it's fun. <laughs> what, to be shot? With a rubber bullet. I, I can imagine f- things like that are like more fun. Is, uh, what kind of size of... Like, if you have a... Sh- uh, the police uh, force use it. Yes. They have, like, shotguns that have... Those are different. Blue. Those are completely different. You can't compare those. Because yeah. this is a huge rubber bullet, and these one can fucking knock you out. Yes, they can break... They break bones. And they break teeth, and they break bones. So they're they're different. Those are uh-huh. different. Those are shot from special shotguns. They have a lot more, um, a lot more pressure behind them, a lot more weight behind them. Uh-huh. You can't compare those to the. Um, uh, do you deal with the like with uh, the police force as well, or uh, any military that use riot gear and, and rubber bullets and things like that for quelling? violent protests i i personally don't deal with them i have trained a lot with uh, police officers where i was just at the same range as them and i they have explained to me their gear i have taken a look at their gear what they use um it's an efficient system what they have with uh with rubber bullets i think it could be made more efficient police in other countries i think it was japan but i'm not exactly sure Mm -hmm. they use paintball guns to mark the uh the um the aggressive or or offenders Uh and they say it doesn't matter if we don't catch you right away it's uh, we can catch you we can catch you a few hours later when you're trying to get home so yeah so what marking they, what them they actually is yes. makes more sense doesn't it, it d- because what you want to do is you want to know later who got who do we have to arrest yeah. and then all they have to do is they they have cameras everywhere so they 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 record the ones that they mark and they can later tell uh, oh um, that that guy we see in this scene he was hitting the he was hitting the police officer and he got a he got a hit exactly here on his arm and oh wow well, like, there he is yeah. there there he is and yeah, that makes but more that's sense why, yeah. but, that's, but they, don't, they don't have paint <coughs> like they have the this, there are some guns sometimes that they have like another another barrel under it that have paints like paint bowls so you got you have you have another one where they put grenades and you have another one they put other <coughs> and there are other ones with a, with a, with a, with a painting thing so they shoot and they mark at the same time that's correct there's a whole shift in um, the approach the strategy in Australia mm-hmm. with uh, what police do in, in situations of violent protest because of covid mm-hmm. and because of the lockdowns that have been happening in melbourne currently Things as we speak really they're messed, they're, up, they're, they're, they're messed up and currently there are daily daily protests that are becoming more and more violent um but Arguably, understandably so, but the police have been um, updating their strategy uh, li- oh, weekly, man. literally I'll weekly. Go fuck up. Yeah, 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 go, go, go. <laughs> I will come back. Yeah, yeah, pop in. They've been updating budget. their things weekly, mm-hmm. and um, they've they've employed a whole range of new ta- uh, tactics. The the, I think rubber bullets is. F- how long has that been around for? Something like this, I'd imagine. Quite a long time. A long time. A long but time. they've now got like something called stinger grenades. Mm-hmm. Not not gas. I mean, they have that too. But there's these. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things now that they. I'd imagine the world's kind of, um, as on a global scale, yes. are dealing with a lot more protests, and a lot more situations. On on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, I personally think that um, there has been. Uh, if if you if you can c- if you um, compared the approach to protests nowadays, then uh, to to let's say. 50 years ago or mm-hmm. so, you could easily get shot at a protest. In, mm-hmm. in, in, in Germany, uh, a whole a whole group of terrorists, the, I, the, the uh, RAF, uh, Rote Armee Fraktion, sh- started exactly because uh, because a, a student uh, got shot at a protest by a police officer, mm. who later turned out to be a East German spy, but that's another oh, story. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> uh, and it's rumored that he did that on purpose in order to... St- uh, to, to uh, he was a plant. We don't know. We don't know. No. Mate, uh, the other guy was going to come on. I hope we'll chat to him another time. Larry, he he's really into that whole like uh, plant the the plants mm-hmm. that cause all the problems are actually put there for purposes. I'm sure he could he could would get have his comments on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring it up to him. I'll, yes. I'll see if he might know that one as well. It was very interesting. Uh, a, a, a huge story. Karl Heinz Kuras. If someone wants to Google it. Uh, and yeah. uh, uh, Benu Unesorg for people who want to Google. When it. was this? Uh, the nin- uh, uh, late nineteen sixties, if I remember that correctly. Okay. Um, people who a group of students, especially who radicalized themselves, radical. Uh, I'm going to say radical communists, but not even necessarily. Um, who then turned out to be terrorists and drew into their circle a lot of high-ranking people, including attorneys. Um, the, and and these these sorts of things. Very very interesting story. Quite a bit of a history buff. Uh, I know a thing or two. Do these things come like? Did you always have? Um, first of all, is it is it in your family? No, working in this field. No, not okay. at all. So where did this 
how did this how did you get to where you are like have you always had uh, an affinity for firearms and for for military history these things <sighs> let me start there uh, i i started out as a <laughs> the first start i was 12 years old i was watching james bond uh, or casino royale and <laughs> you know that movie <laughs> yeah of course yeah ah uh, do you, you know the the starting sequence uh, yep. they always have the gun barrel and then the music scene where they yep. have the credits and all yep. these kinds yep. of things and uh, there you could see a walther ppk which is a small a small nine millimeter gun is that the, uh, is that the james bond gun that, yes that's that the, the, the original pistol? james bond gun yes right. the original james bond what's gun. it called Walt, walter ppk okay. walter ppk yeah. um they might even have one we might even be able to take one look i bet you they later. do actually yes uh it's a 7.65 millimeter small caliber gun uh, that's uh, funnily enough that's the same guy that the uh, same gun that karl heinz kuras who i just mentioned shot the student with so uh -huh. an ex interesting connection there uh -huh. like standard issue police gun at the time Really? Because yes. it seems it's so distinct when you see that gun. When anyone, any regular Joe sees that gun, they think James Bond. Yes. Correct. So you were watching Casino Royale yes. as a what, thirteen-year-old? Twelve-year-old. Twelve-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve-year-old. Uh, and I thought to myself, I don't care what I have to do. I want one of those. <laughs> I just want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and so. And so I uh, waited for another six years to pass because you had to be 18 at the time in Germany to buy a gun. And um, at the same time, when I moved uh, into a different town to study, uh, I joined, a, I, I walked into a gun shop that was there and I said, I, I want this gun. What do I need to do? I, you held on to this for six years. Yes. In the years between, did you then kind of explore or research or at least move into as a career? Mm hmm that area i mean it is it right yes but did you always want to be working in it in the the industry not necessarily i had an experience i i also lived in the united states for a while yeah uh, and during my student years and yeah. of course wyoming wyoming correct. wyoming wyoming why not wyoming why not? <laughs> that's that's exactly the kind of question you got to ask why not wyoming <laughs> amazing place amazing place and lots of firearms very little violence, which in my opinion is connected, but that's some people would debate that. All right, we'll talk about that later. But gladly, yeah. gladly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, I, I just and I, there I just had a, a completely different uh, approach to firearms as we have in Europe. Uh, Being for the American viewers, I don't know how much you'll like me now. I think uh, it's um, uh, it's it's it's. It, then again, I can understand it because there it is treated as something that everyone has a fundamental right, right to. to have. It's the what is it? What's the uh, the the Second Amendment? The Second Amendment. Yes, uh, the, the right to bear arms. The yeah. right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Mm -hmm. uh, it mm -hmm. says that in the in the Constitution, and in my opinion, I I can understand some arguments that anti gunners make. I think we'll come back to that later. But a fundamental right that is in a Constitution should be treated as such, mm -hmm. and uh, only because uh, every every um, every right that is granted by the Constitution has negative effects. Freedom of speech leads to hate speech online. I don't like it, but it's part of mm -hmm. speech. Let's mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. Let's say so. Yep. And uh, so they have a completely different approach to that, which, again, I can understand because you deal uh, with something differently that you have a fundamental right to do. Um, compared to Europe. Compared to Europe. Uh, which doesn't have anything like that? Uh, not necessarily. The uh, this Czech Republic, for example, mm -hmm. recently passed an amendment to their <coughs> constitution, which allows... Uh, I, I'm not sure about the exact wording, but they allow uh, they 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 have a fundamental right to within the confines of the law, as their as their amendment says, protect themselves and others and the state with firearms. Uh, I like that in the state uh, tag on, so yeah. they can actually go. You can have you can bear arms and legally defend yourself, your, yourself, and the state, and the state. I, I, I if I'm rem if I remember that correctly, that's in there. Okay. If I remember that and this is a recent in amendment. In Very the recent. To la in within the last year, I'm going to say. Within the so last before that, it was... They had very... L they had not loose. I'm not going to say loose. They had very sensible and very uh, very permissive gun laws, I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And um, still have a very low crime rate, again. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But... Um, Yes, so uh, they, they also have this sort of amendment. The other country that's very free in Europe about firearms is Switzerland, where... Switzerland's free about fucking everything, isn't it? These <laughs> Switzerland is Switzerland. Again, very sensible approach to guns. Every young person, every young man is obligated to go into military service. That's right, yeah. Uh, wait, wait, in Switzerland? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Okay, so they they... 
they handle um, firearms as, a, as, as almost as a, as a rites of passage. Correct. And uh, after you leave the military, you can you actually have a, an option to purchase that firearm from the military that you were issued there for a very reasonable price, and you're allowed to keep that at home. And whoa, 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 wait a minute. So if I was in Switzerland, growing up as a young man, I'll... Uh, be handed a gun to, to train with or to what do you mean to just in mili- you would you would be obligated to go into military service yep, so be, where you would right, be taught yeah. to yeah. use a gun safely responsibly a gun well as in that you're saying you could keep that gun that yes you were, yes when you, you enter the military you're you're given a gun I'm sure the the Swiss your Swiss viewers will be able to give you further information <laughs> Swiss on this viewers, okay I'll find uh, some <laughs> first <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there are. I've got a couple of mates from um, from uh, from uh, from Switzerland. I'll, uh, I'll I'll hit them up about this. Yeah. So, um, but uh, as far as I know, the uh, you are when you enter the military, you're handed a firearm, and it's a it's a rifle, Sig, uh, five fifty, mm-hmm. PE, if I remember correctly, and um, you train with this gun. And when you leave the military, you have the option to purchase it for a very reasonable price. It's modified so that it doesn't shoot fully automatic anymore, only semi-automatic. Uh, but um, and you're ob- you're you're uh, allowed to hold on to this rifle. When you were in Wyoming, did you hunt? Uh, I personally, at the time, did not. And do you hunt? I have a hunter's license now. I sadly don't find the time to hunt as much as I would like to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, in, in my opinion, though, I appreciate everyone who who does. I think it's the most ethical way of uh, of of. Uh, of so of, this of is not. Food. This, this is not hunting for sport. This is hunting for for food. Yes, yes, sir. I think that's also the most ethical way, rather than buying it off a, a shelf like I do. I, I would like to. I, you know, I understand people. I'm, I'm not like this, but I understand. I understand people who say I would like my piece of meat that I enjoy to have lived a good life, to have lived a free life outside of mass, uh, mass animal production. I'm gonna say, mm-hmm. and um, die, a, die a, a quick death, and that's the, one of the most important duties in a hunter to. Make sure that the the piece of the the animal dies a painless death. Mm, doesn't suffer. Doesn't suffer. That's number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hunting for sport. I, I think there's a few misconceptions there that I need to that that needs to be cleared up. Also, um, usually people who hunt for sport, the the meat doesn't get lost afterwards. Some people just enjoy hunting. They themselves don't take the meat, which doesn't mean that it gets lost. Uh-huh. Uh, it usually ha- what what was also very popular in Hungary is that you pay money, quite substantial money, which then again goes back into uh, funding nature research, funding uh, uh, development of woods, funding these sorts of activities, mm. um, who just want uh, the trophies, which are the, the skull and the, the antlers, mm-hmm. and um, they pay a lot of money for this. That doesn't mean that the meat gets lost. The meat mm. gets uh, either taken by the owners of the hunting grounds mm-hmm. or other people who are interested in purchasing this meat. In purchasing this meat. Oh, man. Patty, I'm trying to think. Someone I was talking to someone recently. It might have been Tim, actually. The guy um, uh, on the movie set. Mm-hmm. Someone was mentioning hunting recently. Um, I, I can't remember anyway. That's a mm-hmm. that's a segue to something else. Well, it's some, it's yeah. a, anyway, yeah. um, so when you were in Wyoming, you mm-hmm. you weren't hunting there, but you obviously experienced the the gun culture as being different from from Europe. Very different. And then from that point, did you start moving into the into that field? I returned to Germany afterwards, and um, I was setting up to to go study at university, IT, which didn't have anything to do with mm-hmm. my with my, I can say passion, but my my interest for yeah. firearms. Yeah. And there, I joined a shooting club first of all. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, you said you walked into a a gun store. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they told me, which I already knew, they told me that um, you need to take uh, an exam. Uh, to be allowed to purchase a firearm. An exam? Yes, an exam. So theory? A theory pr- uh, and practical. Practice? Theory, yeah. practical, and oral. So uh, also Oral? Yes, they ask you different, uh, all different sorts of questions. Like what, for example? Um, like, uh, for example, there is a popular, uh, a popular type of ammunition, 9mm. Um, it's called officially called 9mm Luger in German firearms legal designation. But there, it, it used to be called 9mm Parabellum. Or you could call it nine by nineteen because that's the length of the case. Nineteen uh-huh. millimeters. Nine millimeter is the diameter of the bullet. So there, I'm, I'm holding a case here. Yes. So this says on it. I just picked this off the ground randomly. Yes. Oh, this is a nine millimeter. Exactly. What does it say exactly? It says nine millimeter CBC. 
Luger. Yes. Nine millimeter Luger. This would be the correct designation, um, the legal correct designation. It could also say nine by 19, for example, because that is also a correct designation of the same caliber. A uh, question yeah. would be, for example, uh, what are other names for nine millimeter Luger that you might find? I, I see a box here in front of me that it says nine millimeter Parabellum. Is this the same? Can I put this in my nine millimeter Luger uh, gun? Okay, okay. For example. It's quite technical then, I guess. Very technical and quite difficult. But there, there were no ethical questions? Define it. Give me an example for an ethical question. Uh, difference between self-defense and attack. Like, like I don't know. I'm trying to think of one now. Um, is it okay to use a firearm on your front lawn as opposed to in your house? Well, um, I personally, this, as, as this is a government, not a government exam, but a government mandated exam, as the the, the, the exam is held in the confines of the law yeah. uh, by certified gun clubs that are allowed to hold this exam. Mm. Um, th I, I don't think that it's the same kind of question where uh, if uh, if you're driving a car and you have to slurve, would you slurve into the old lady or the baby? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. It's the same sort of question. So my answer to a question like that would be, I'm I, I'm going to Depends use on the law. I'm going to use the firearms in uh, the firearm in uh, according to the applicable law at the place and time where I'm at, yeah, and that's yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So that yeah, so it is more about the 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 confines of the law and, and that's what you're screaming exactly. and that's what you're going to... Yes. But that would be changing in different from place to place, I imagine, yes. obviously. Yes. Are there big variations in Europe within countries? Yes, there are huge variations. Well, you've got the States as the States. Mm -hmm. In Australia, just quick... Do you know anything about the gun laws in Australia? I know a lot happened? about the... I, do you know about Port Arthur? Yes, sir. Uh, and you know the impact that had? Yes. It's it's used as a... Ne uh, here in, in the firearms community in Europe, it's used as a negative as a negative example of what happens when uh, you try to ban firearms and you try to hold a buyback and you have a rate of... You have a, suc a low success rate or uh, as in... Tell me your perspective on that because we see that, and I have as well in the past, I'll, I'll admit, mm -hmm. as, a, as a success story. If you watch a Michael Moore documentary, he'll point to that as a as a success story, and mm -hmm. we'll get to Michael Moore. I want to talk about Michael Moore, but um, yeah, we we generally say yeah we we've done right by that. Mm -hmm. Something awful happened with a gun uh, incident. We brought bought back all the guns. Now you can only have a gun if you have a license, and that therefore you go through the process of having a license. Mm -hmm. No one can just walk in off the street and buy a gun. Mm -hmm. And for us, that was a success. Mm -hmm. But from a different perspective. My perspective is, uh, so first of all, in general, every misuse of a firearm is a, is a tragedy, and I will not try to minimize that. However, uh, in my opinion, um, the crimes of one person cannot can should not negatively impact uh, an, another person. Because one person gets uh, attacked on the street with a knife, for example, which is legal to carry on the street, in most countries at least, we don't try to ban knives because it's unpractical, because knives are tools that are used for, for good purposes, for cutting your bread, for doing whatever. Firearms are the same way. Firearms are... Uh, are tools that, in in essence, accelerate a uh, lead or, dif or or a bullet of different material towards a target. Uh, in in general, yeah, I I personally find it good to vet gun owners uh, upon based upon reasonable criteria and mandate a government license uh, in order to be allowed to purchase those farms or mandate a background check, even if you say you don't, because a background check is in essence. A uh, license that is just issued in the gun store because you're, the government has vetted you in, in advance. I support that. Uh, let me play devil's advocate. Yes, sir. you walk into a, a big room. Mm -hmm. You've had no background yes. of, of violence mm -hmm. yet. Yes, do you know what I mean? Doesn't yes. mean someone's not capable of violence, mm -hmm. but with a knife as opposed to a gun, mm -hmm. a knife you can't run around the room going. Chuk, 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 chuk. You can, mm -hmm. but eventually you're going to get stopped, right? Mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. a gun, it's it seems to be. That a gun, for me, goes a little bit further in that it can do. Just, it literally it just comes down to the fact that it does more damage, or mm -hmm. it can do more damage to more people in one situation, mm -hmm. and therefore that's where I've, I've I've heard people argue that that is where the line is, that something that is just more dangerous shouldn't be in the hands of people, despite whether they have background checks or not. Mm -hmm. And that's me playing devil's advocate. I understand completely. Um, let's let's stay with Australia, as you've mentioned Australia. Um, the, the main category of firearms uh, that was banned at the time was semi-automatic long guns, which is, for example, 
I'm not sure about shotguns exactly, but uh, which is, for example, the semi-automatic. Uh, this thing. I, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm gonna lift it up for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get a let's get a, a shot of this. This this was uh, what did they call it? There wasn't there a nickname for M- it. MG42, Hitler's buzzsaw. Hitler's buzzsaw. So I don't know if you can guys can see that. <laughs> Actually, how heavy is this thing? Yeah, oh, quite heavy. So obviously, oh yeah, that is heavy. Yeah, well, it's wow. not meant to be shot while standing up. It's meant to be shot yeah, while you're lying down on the yes, on the ground. E- either lying down or you're standing behind a barrier, and you would set it up onto the barrier like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then you get behind it. You wouldn't hold onto it. I'm just holding onto it now. But it's sit it. Yeah. Yes. But something like this, obviously, mm-hmm. is S- well. This well, this specific gun looks to be more than it actually is. Mm. Because this gun was originally built as a machine gun, mm. a fully automatic machine gun, mm. and uh, these have been banned in most countries, or not banned, these are tightly regulated in most countries, and were in Australia before, and were in the United States before anything happened. In the United States, this kind of machine gun, if it were fully automatic, has been tightly regulated since the 1930s, in, f- in, prince, in effect. Which is kind of funny. Short side story before I come back to Australia. Uh, in the l- early 20th century, so until 1930, you could mail order a machine gun in the United <laughs> States, and their murder rate was still lower than uh, their m- murder rate was still lower than it is today. So, it's um, maybe we should be thinking about that. There's other effects for crime. For example, prohibition. For example creating a market for for criminals in terms of drugs by not legalizing them which i'm an advocate of aha uh-huh, yes yeah same yes. kind of same kind of deal yes y- uh why by, by banning things you leave things open to be obtained legally yes can you imagine if uh drugs were legalized can you imagine mm. the the amount of th- 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 uh, you would you would be pulling out the um the the business the grounds for business of uh, of a lot of drug manufacturers of all these drug traders, you would knock out secondary effects like turf wars. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so same deal with um with the pro- prohibition of, of firearms in the oil region. C- correct, and the prohibition of uh, of uh, of alcohol in the United States, which led to their biggest crime crisis in in their mm, history. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. So, so back to Australia. Yes. Um, the the biggest category of firearms that are not le- well they are legal but they're t- heavily regulated and a very cl- small class of people can own them in Australia are semi-automatic rifles sec- mm. semi-automatic uh, large caliber rifles these kinds of rifles when we if we look to the United States where these rifles are commonly available to most of the citizens there is no state where these kinds of rifles are are not available within a maximum of ten days for every citizen who doesn't have a criminal record. Mm. Uh, these kinds of rifles, and actually not just these kinds of rifles, but any long gun. How, how many how many murders do you think they are in the United States with any type of long gun? Any all and any and all long guns. Well, most most murders probably happen with handguns, right? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, the amount of the amount of murders with all long guns, not just semi-automatics, even like the the uh, grandma's grandpa's brake top, which you've probably seen, where you put two bullets in there. All long guns account for less murders than bodily objects, which means hand, pure hands and pure feet in the United States. Really? Yes. And this is a statistic. So more called. people are, are, are killed, killed by with hand, pure both hands, hands and, and feet than as all opposed to long rifle. Yes, sir. So it's the handgun. Because um, one of the arguments I've heard uh, is that why do you need mm-hmm. to have access to a semi-automatic machine gun if you're defending yourself that's an oxymoron in itself but a, a machine gun is a fully aut- this is a machine gun fully automatic rifle just because this is a very common misconception uh, this is a machine gun which is fully automatic which means per pull of the trigger it fires it can it continues firing yeah. a yeah. semi-automatic uh, rifle fires one bullet per pull of the trigger and you have to pull the trigger dick, again dick, 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 yes dick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes that's the difference yeah so the argument yes. was like to keep it simple why what what justifies someone legally being able to carry a big gun mm-hmm. as opposed to a small gun? But as you've just stated, which is news to me mm-hmm. and very interesting, and it yes. actually kind of makes sense that the bigger guns actually are used less, Rarely. or they they're, they're yeah. So it's the handguns, it's the small ones. Yes, which are still legal in Australia with a license to to uh, to possess. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So <laughs> that's an that's a statistic often overlooked, in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, and these these numbers come from the FBI crime statistics. Rifles, all rifles, not just not just semi-automatics, but all rifles. And you have to imagine that in the United States, there's a lot of these old guns just laying around from grandpa's age, from yeah. wherever. So they are not that uncommon that you have an old gun laying around in a house. All these rifles combined account for less murders than hands and feet. But I think the murders are also in the context of like turf war, gang warfare. I mean, again, come from Australia we don't we don't have you don't hear fire on uh, gunshots on the street you mm-hmm. don't even the police I don't even know if they have like um, but it, it culturally in Australia mm-hmm. no one shoots anyone mm-hmm. occasionally on the news you hear about it but you know then you hear in the United States that it happens all the fucking time I guess you know these these smaller handguns are part of the reason for that mm-hmm. Most is handguns. Most mm. is handguns. Oh. But I think it, 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 it's the stuff that gets... It's the big blimps on the radar. Mm-hmm. The, the high school massacres. Mm-hmm. The big the big, sh- the, 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 the big shoot-ups. Yes. They are usually with weapons that aren't just a handgun. Mm-hmm. And that's the stuff, I think, that gets... Uh, that people see and read about mm-hmm. and feel the, the shock factor of. Well, and then I think this is when the, this is when the, 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 the question of um, firearms in America... Get brought up after these mass mass shootings. I'm thinking that's correct. Um, to mass shootings, uh, I would like to point to one specific point. Mass shootings. Uh, I completely agree with the firearms advocates in this case, where they say um, we need to allow, for example, teachers to arm themselves if they are allowed to carry a firearm outside the school and they've received the proper training. Which in most states you need a specific amount of training, classroom, and range time. And if they have received this, and maybe even additional government-mandated training, why should they not be allowed to carry inside of their uh, inside of their place of employment? Uh, the saddest example of why this is necessary, in my opinion, is the Parkland massacre um, in Florida. Um, when, when was that one? Within the, la- within the past three years sometimes. I don't know the exact date. Mm. Um, they had a police officer on site. They had just updated their security protocols. They had a police officer on site. The police officer was scared to go in. He was scared to go in, and uh, he was sitting outside as people were getting murdered on the inside. And uh, the teachers at the time were not allowed to carry firearms because Florida law, even if they were allowed to carry a firearm outside of the school, they were not allowed to carry one inside the school. And um, and when that happened, obviously they were left defenseless. Yes. And uh, in in if we're 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 talking about America now, um, the the other argument would be. <sighs> It doesn't matter what kind of carnage it causes. It's a fundamental right. Change the constitution, which you will never get a majority for in the United States. Mm. Two thirds of the, uh, two thirds of the states, uh, two thirds of both legislatures. There will never be a majority for this. This constitution was made when um, there were things like the OK Corral and and fucking gunslingers and shit. Though, don't you think it's a bit outdated? The constitution. Uh, I I think the the U.S. Constitution is a, a magnificent document. Uh, at the time, there would have never been a majority to uh, to to outlaw slavery, for example. But mm. in my opinion, the fo- founding fathers found a way to write the Constitution in a way where, with time progressing, by saying all citizens are made equal, saying at the time the uh, the African the African um, African slaves were not citizens, so they're not affected by this. But as time progressed, uh, and they were accepted as being citizens, they automatically gained the same gained the same rights and gave the Supreme Court a way to uh, to forbid slavery. I think hmm. that the founding fathers of the U.S. wrote the Constitution with a lot of foresight, hmm. uh, banning banning something at the time already that they would have never been a majority for, banning it in a document that everyone agreed on. So it's um, hmm. and um, they they had lived through the Industrial Revolution or through, through much of it, uh, in my opinion, they had the foresight to see that, uh, that firearms would also develop. On the other hand, the, um, the, the Second Amendment was added partly to, due to the pressure of a lot of the Federalist forces who were afraid of a big, uh, big federal government and who wanted the people to have a means to defend themselves against a tyrannical government, as they already wrote. That's the thing, isn't it? Yes. It's the defense against a tyrannical government that yes. gets underlined. Yes, and on a big level, where uh, where if the in in and I'm speaking as Americans would talk right now. This is not my personal opinion, but um, an American would say right now on a big level where the tyrannical government becomes the, the the federal government or a state government becomes tyrannical as a whole. We need to fight against them. Um, <gasps> if this was in effect in Australia, mm-hmm. 
There would be if if our culture of guns in Australia were similar to the Americas now today. Yes, this would be happening. The right people now. could be. Def- this is what an American would say. The people would be defending themselves against tyranny. That's that's exactly what they would say. You know, in the streets of, of Melbourne right now, you got people running around mm-hmm. and and like defending themselves against what I also am, am starting to believe mm-hmm. is a tyrannical government. Yes, they've been in lockdown for out of the the year that's mm-hmm. passed. Mm-hmm. I think. Nine to ten months yes. in hard lockdown. People are losing their fucking minds. I've got friends who call me up mm-hmm. and they've got these are people I used to teach with mm-hmm. who got bags under their eyes, who are, you can hear their, mm-hmm. their spouses screaming at yeah. them through the, the next room. They are losing their minds, they're losing their jobs, they're losing the the kids. Like it's to the point now in Australia where it, I was I, t- I said to my mum, because my mum's a hard advocate for, for, for fucking off this lockdown shit and mm-hmm. just being reasonable about it, yeah. especially based on the figures that we're getting. Yes. I said, it, for the first time in Australia's history, I believe there should be a military coup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, if I was there, I'd be pushing for the government to be taken over because I feel they're tyrannical, mm-hmm. because this has gone too far. But there is no, um, there's no force for that. If any of the police officers who have been actually using more and more violent mm-hmm. tactics to keep to quell the violence mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. creeping up on them mm-hmm. in in a sense and with the rubber bullets and all of that yes. fine. if any one of them turned around and actually sided with the protesters mm-hmm. which they have you know every right to do because i bet you they're just the police are just as as, as fed in up. Fact, just as fed up yes they've got to mandate these laws and if they turn around and said you know what the government's actually the, all of their calls have been out of fucking just over the top mm-hmm. so let's take back control in the case that you're explaining that would this be is exactly actually, this is an example where that would, should actually happen to be honest well uh, your words not mine uh, <laughs> I think I believe that. In, I actually in, believe in, that. In my position as uh, as the owner of a lot of <laughs> licenses, I no, but I I, I I definitely this is what an American again. This is what an American yeah, would say. Yeah. This is why we have firearms. Mm-hmm. That's a big level. On a smaller level, for example, you see the cases of police violence in the in the United States, yeah. where police officers get sentenced afterwards, which means that at the time the people, if they're do you think you probably saw the George Floyd video? Yeah, what happened yep, there? Yep. And it doesn't matter what opinion you have of the you have of the whole of the whole matter. Um, do you think the police officers would have acted the same way if there had been five five uh, citizens standing around with one of those in the background? I don't think so. If they had known that they they this is and this is the fundament, this is the core of the Second Amendment to keep government power in check. Wow. This and uh, on a big and on a small level. But there's this, uh, but then there's the problem of escalation. If you've got a, a one of those in your hand, yes. And if a, a military man or a government man knows mm-hmm. that they b- can be checked. Mm-hmm. They'll just get a bigger gun, right? This idea of escalation is a problem. That's why I think a lot of people are in favor of de-escalation. Mm-hmm. It's like the atom bombs, right? Two Were countries pointing at each other all the time, daring each other to, you know, you first, you first. If you do it, I will do it. You know, mutual assured destruction. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it's like, okay, scale it back because you're mm-hmm. going to blow the fucking planet and you know, mm-hmm. tear the place and, and kill everyone. Yes. So rather than escalating mm-hmm. we have to make a conscious effort to de-escalate so we can still play have these these uh, checks and figures and defense and all of that uh, in play but at a level that's not going to cause so much death which personally i don't have a problem with death i think there's too many people on the planet anyway <laughs> but corona you know what i mean that. you know corona is sorting that out yes but do you know what i mean like it just feels like a lot of people are like uh, we're, we're fearing escalation and who and, is Everyone is. I think the people when, in when Australia play, right now would like some escalation in terms of to sort to sort to, to sort, sort out this shit, yeah. to sort the issue to sort. When is the next election coming up? I'm sure. Is the government going to get voted? I have no idea uh, about I the political think. situation. And in, in again, Australia. we're talking about a state government here in Victoria and Melbourne. The guy who, um, uh, Andrews is oh, fucking anyway. Don't get me started on that. But this, we're talking about a state government, and the federal government is pressuring the state governments to open up faster. Mm-hmm. But the state governments are so adamant about Why? winning the race because it's a, it's to me it's a pride thing mm-hmm. you know and being an island and mm-hmm. being the fact that we did actually have COVID out of the place mm-hmm. at one point I think this time last year things were open and there were zero cases mm-hmm. something crept in it started spreading they panicked mm-hmm. we want to be able to control this completely so we can wave the flag and say hey look how good we are it's uh, that's my opinion and that's yep. why they're so hardcore the lockdowns and stuff but to come back to your it's, uh, your theory about escalation just give me one second yes, i want to do a, a, a backup i'll get the garage band 
recording as well, just so. Yeah, all right, Sydney. You know how many times, sometimes we've had this whole thing done and it turns out something hasn't worked? Seriously. I'm bad luck with technology. I have to double, I should be double, or triple backing myself up. <laughs> but yeah, continue. Um, to come back about escalation with your argument, it would call for the disarming of police officers, for example, because otherwise the drug dealers who, who they're up against would get a bigger gun. I think this is a, this is a foolish argument, in, in my opinion. Because, um, again, uh, the... Um, Saying that, saying that it's in the interest of a citizen to not be allowed to defend himself, mm. I, 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 I'm not on board with that. But to defend yourself to a point, though, like, you know, um, you could... Sh- I'll give you the example of, of me with a gun in the street, yes. right? Now, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to carry this with me in case something bad happens. Mm-hmm. I don't hear gunshots in Budapest. I don't know if you, you probably know more about whether there's any vo- gun violence or anything happening in the street Rarely. in Budapest. Rarely, right? Yes. So I thought to myself, and this is what the argument of Yazan said, well, they insisted, you, you, look, Josh, you're not really, you're not, you're not a citizen of the country. You're still a guest. You, you, you know, you're still kind of like, you, you're finding out, to be honest, I know more about the streets of these places than the fact that they do, based on what I've experienced. Mm-hmm. But their argument is, and this is where I, I decided to hand it over, if you start employing these defensive tactics mm-hmm. and it's loud and it's scary, then you're in danger you're you're putting it out there that you're the most dangerous person to be messed with. So therefore someone who witnesses you doing that and wants to get back at you will find a bigger gun and therefore you have this situation of escalation. And you're contributing to that. Mm-hmm. There's no gunshot. There's a rare sound of guns in the street. If you're making gun noises in the street out of self-defense, mm-hmm. who's to say that you're starting to trigger things to get worse in terms of that? And when they say worse, that's what they mean, is that the violence with guns leads to more deaths. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't really give a shit about that. But like that was their argument. And that, I think, is the argument that I kind of side with, this idea of escalation. Mm-hmm. There's a scene at the end of uh, the Batman film. Remember Batman yes. Begins? yes. Where Gordon says um, to Batman, he goes, "Don't you fear escalation? You know, you start, um, you know, you your police start firing off certain weapons, then mm-hmm. they have armor piercing um, bullets, then the, they'll get armored up even more, and then you'll get bigger guns to beat." Fit. So where does it end? Where like where do we draw the line at, at escalation? Yes. And of course, the Joker was <laughs> the escalation of Batman. Yes. Well, uh, two points about this. Uh, if this if this were the case, then the most armed nations in Europe or anywhere in the world would be the uh, would be the most unsafe countries whatsoever. Uh, in the United States, for example, uh, the most armed states are the safest states, and the states with the most restrictive gun laws, that being New York and California, are the cra- the the states with the highest crime rates. Why? Is there a re- rhyme and reason to that? And you must have an opinion on that. Yes, I do. Um, I think that the amount of firearms available to the people who have been wedded and who have uh, who have no criminal background uh, contributes in, in in negligible amounts to the crimes committed with firearms. Mm. What does commit to fi- What does commit to cri- uh, to um, to the amount of crimes with firearms are gangs, which are uh, which are in in larger cities, like like in Los Angeles, like in New York, these sorts of places. And uh, I think that firearms have v- and and poverty. So poverty mm. and uh, and um, not even just poverty, because even African countries that are po- uh, poor all over have very low crime rates. Um, poverty comes from big uh, no, not poverty. Crime comes from differences in mm. and affluency. So mm. very poor and very rich people. Mm. That's what that's what. So the that's the core of the problem, from. really. In my opinion, I- I- I'm not a sociologist. But I think that firearms have very little to do with it. Again, as long as they're in the hands of, of, uh, of uh, law-abiding citizens who mm. have been vetted, who have know how to handle them properly, um, this also rules out the accidents. For, for example, also a very common misconception in the United States, they always say 30,000 deaths due to firearms. Well, that includes suicides, for example. Uh, uh, common tricks. Common uh, tricks. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, really? S- yes. So they include that statistic. They say death. De- do you always have to read death between by gun- yeah, death, yeah, deaths yeah. due to firearms? Is All what right. they always say. Not murders. Not uh, and and it includes justifiable homicides where someone completely justifiably uh, mm-hmm. defends themselves. 
to come mm, back. Yeah, it's all about the language around the, the statistics. Definitely, one hundred percent. I'm rich and, uh, Mr. Moore's probably guilty of that as well. <laughs> Do you? Have you you've seen Col- uh, Bowling for Columbine? Yes. You would have seen all of those. Any media that's that's related to guns, I bet you you've you've consumed most of Lord it. Lord of War. Yes. One. Give us you. Give it. Give us. Give us a couple. Because I love films. I uh, love media. Lord of War. Uh, War Dogs. Is that the one with? Um, Who's the the fat guy? Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Yes, sir. It's an excellent movie. Is it? Yes. I was thinking about that this L- morning, actually, because that's the guy who made Joker. Y- yes, both both Lord of War and uh, and um, War Dogs. War Dogs. They both portray very accurately real life, actually. I was going to say, in, yeah. In most cases, in in most cases, they portray uh, they portray the bureaucracy, which um, in in many European countries, I I know this for Germany for sure, the amount of bureaucracy and the amount of regulation actually hinders investigations into 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 firearms and into. Um, into uh, into where illegal guns come from because there's so much paperwork to do that the authorities themselves don't have a don't have an overview anymore. I've been uh. I've been I've been told this by multiple people that it's so complicated by now that determining what's legal and what's not legal is actually, uh, well, not that simple. <laughs> so, to to come back one more yep, time to yep. to Lord of War, um, it exactly it it works out exactly that way. The most of the guns on the street. They they come from ex military arsenals. Uh, when uh, when uh, the Russians left East Germany uh, with the fall of the Iron Curtain, they purposefully they unlocked the armories and left. Same way as the United uh-huh. States left Afghanistan, where we now have six hundred thousand handguns and uh, and um, l- small and light weapons, which basically rifles and handguns, in the hands of directly in the hands of of, of what some people call terrorists. Directly, I, I don't know if I would call all Taliban terrorists because they don't all, uh, well, you could call them terrorists, but in the hands of bad people, that's for sure. So that's what happened recently in Afghanistan. Yeah, Six hundred. They've, they've, they've th- left the. They well, they left the. Fu- they left the. They left their weaponry. They left attack helicopters. They left everything for the Afghan army. The Afghan army, as we all know, <laughs> lost to the Taliban or or uh, or uh, surrendered to the Taliban. And guess how? Who now has those? Has that equipment? <sighs> It wasn't it, what, what was it about? I mean, um, oh god, I'm, 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 that, there are so many worm cans of worms to open up here. <laughs> we should do a few of these actually, to yes, be honest. gladly, gladly. Yeah, Patty, like this because it's too big mm-hmm. a top and it's constantly evolving. Yes, you know? absolutely. Um, Lord of War, mm-hmm. War Dogs, they are accurate in a sense, I would say so. I would I say because so. I'm, I remember vaguely Lord of War, mm-hmm. I haven't seen War Dogs. Good movie. I, I mean, recommend it. Obviously, Bowling for Columbine's got a close uh, close part to me because in my first few years of teaching in a high school, mm-hmm. um, as part of the curriculum, mm-hmm. we had to teach that movie mm-hmm. as the English curriculum. So we had to watch, show, watch, show it and explore it and analyse it and unpack mm-hmm. it and stuff like that. And so obviously in that movie, there are, well, I've, I've, I'm versed with the key points. Mm-hmm that Moore was saying in a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Do you remember a lot of that movie? I, I, I don't, but if you remind me of the of some of the points... I maybe would, next time. I wouldn't mind watching it yeah. again, actually. If, if we had the internet, maybe next time what we could do is pull up a scene mm-hmm. with Charlton Heston, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, or one of the arguments he made about um, the, the, the rate of deaths in other countries compared to America, mm-hmm. where, the gun, where there are gun law there aren't as restricted gun laws compared to other places. And that was one of the statistics you brought up. Mm -hmm. But since, you know, having kind of over time, I've thought about it and it, it, it it is fundamentally something deeper than just being able to access a gun. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know that um, places like Switzerland Mm -hmm. and and Canada, for example, Mm -hmm. like they have, and actually, no, that's something he did bring up. Mm -hmm. He went over to Canada, Mm -hmm. which have similar, if not, Looser gun laws than the than, um, than the United States. Uh, the s- similar, a l- little bit more restrictive. Depends on the state in the United States. For example, the state of New Jersey or the state of New York would have fundamentally more strict uh, gun laws than than Canada. Mm. Then again, Canada has introduced some unnecessary restrictions and some stupid restrictions in the recently. Yes, and mm. uh, since then, it, it I, I'm not that well versed on Canadian mm. gun laws. I've not done business in Canada before. I think one of the scenes was uh, it might not have even been one of the other ones. Not yes. not not um, yeah. It was like I was literally two cities like Canada, America, mm-hmm. and uh, it might have been Chicago. 
Chicago and somewhere else. Anyway, yeah, it was, it was Detroit. It was lit- isn't Det- Detroit? Detroit and something Maybe. else. Yeah, they, they literally sit across from each yeah. other. The stats here are huge. The stats here aren't. Yes. The laws are the same. So really, it's the culture or the, the culture slash the social society mm-hmm. that is the real issue here. And I think mm-hmm. you touched on it when you said poverty. 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 Drugs. Poverty and drugs. The availability of drugs. Mm. The uh, the turf wars, mm-hmm. uh, the 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 war on drugs, as the Americans would call it, mm. are are in my opinion the key points. Gang, ga- the, the, gang. the topic of gangs in, in in and and this gang culture. Would you uh, in in of course in Canada you also have guns. You have gangs in in every in in every country. But I, I think the culture of gangs is a little different in the United States than, for example, in Canada or Australia. You know, so, so, oddly, what pops in my head is Romeo and Juliet, the Baz Luhrmann version in the 90s with mm-hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio yes. and Kate Winslet. Mm-hmm. Whereas you got a modified version of two w- gangs mm-hmm. in the old days. They pull out the rapiers, the swords, and, yes. and have at it, right? <laughs> yes. And in that movie, because it's, it's modernised, they the rapiers are the handguns. Mm-hmm. They've got mm-hmm. the names on the side and all yeah. of that. And they literally, there are scenes in the movie where yeah. they are wielding these guns almost like in a sword fight. Uh, uh-huh. What that makes me think of is that, and it also reminds me of another scene from a movie called Friday, where Ice Cube's grabbing a gun. This is a comedy, by the way. Have you seen the movie Friday? Sadly, no. Oh, it's brilliant. He, he's, he's about to ha- grab a handgun, which he's, he's got hidden under his pillow to go out and, mm-hmm. and deal with a bully. And this is actually a comedy movie. And then he's, his father has been a real funny character up until that point catches him walking out the door and says, is that a gun in your hand, son? And he said, yeah. He goes, do you feel like a man with a gun, gun in your hand? And he's like, well, I guess I'm a man without it. And he's like, that's right. These are all you need, right? Mm-hmm. These are all you need. And I actually subscribe to that. I feel, apart from hunting, that a gun mm-hmm. is a coward's weapon. On the one hand, I agree. On the other hand, um, you could say, imagine you have a house fire, for example, and you have a fire extinguisher. One could say a fire extinguisher is a coward's weapon. A real man would only use uh, a bucket of water. For <laughs> um, in, so it's about in, the in, in, effects. If, on it's the, about the outcome. Yes. Uh, in most self-defense situations, which uh, is the reason I uh, would carry a gun for, um, is... Um, uh, you, you, the, in most self-defense situations, the average self-defense situation uh, requires about two to three bullets, and walk and mm. works works about the following way: someone. This is the average self-defense <coughs> situation. Someone uh, tries to rob a store or mug a person. Uh, the person says, "Hey, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. Of course, I'm giving you my wallet." Uh, you hand them your wallet. You let you leave it on. You, you let it fall on the ground, or you wait for a second. You wait your turn for the person to be distracted. Pull out your gun. Poof, poof, poof. That's mm. that's the average self defense situation, mm. and especially if that other person is carrying a gun themselves or a knife, uh, I would not call someone a coward who would say that a firearm is the only uh, proper tool to defend yourself from that kind of an attack. Mm. They say uh, that there's something called the five meter rule or the uh, or the fifteen foot rule, which means that if someone is closer to you than that distance and they have a knife in their hand. You can't pull your gun and sh- and get a shot off quickly enough before they get to That's stab right, you. That's right. Yeah. And the, the 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 okay. This is this is half. Tr- this is a this is a truth, but a little misleading because only because someone stabs you once, it doesn't mean that you die. Number one. Number two. Um, there can be situations in which someone is <coughs> hit in a deadly way, but they still have around ten seconds in uh, ten seconds of full fighting in front of them because of their. Uh, because of their inre- adrenaline, mm. and uh, in that situation, if a firearm can only uh, can only disable them in about ten seconds, I'm gonna say, uh, do you think you can disable them with your with your fists? Mm. No, mm. I, I, no. No, 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 no. So it's really just about the practicality of self defense yes. versus the the romance of you know being a man and, N- and using it's your hands. N- it's not about that. And uh, y- uh, the the general rule of t- self defense with a handgun, and you you don't pull out your gun unless you're saving your own life. Mm. Or, uh, but it's too easy for people to to mess with that rule. Well, I mean, we're human beings, but right? But do they? Do they look at Switzerland, for example? They they oh, they have a they have a gun in almost every household, and they have the lowest murder rate in all of Europe, if I, or one of the lowest murder rates in all of Europe. Look at Wyoming; they have more guns than people there. They have one of the lowest murder rates in the in the United States. Mm. It's it it do, just doesn't happen that way. Mm. If I'm holding a knife in my hand, it doesn't mean I'm going to stab someone. Mm. Yeah, it's the exact same way. It's yeah. the exact same. 
Yeah. doesn't make a difference. Only because you have a tool to do something, it doesn't mean you're going to do it if you're a sane human being. And if you're not, uh, what what doesn't happen in real life is you pull out a gun and you say, "Hey, get get out." That doesn't. That's not how it works. Mm. That's not how it works. Mm. At least not with reasonable, properly trained gun owners. Mm. Wow. All right. Cool. Cool. We gotta we gotta continue this because I'm, I'm a bit conscious of time. What time? What, what, what time did we start? It feels like. We're, hang on. Let me see. What time is it? We've been going for oh an hour. We've been going for exactly an hour in a second. Wow. We're fifty nine minutes in. All right. <laughs> um. Let me think. Um, have you shot anyone? No. Have you, you, you said you mentioned you've never been shot. No. Have you seen someone be shot? No. Hmm. Oh man, I can't remember, I can't think of anything else at the top of my head. Oh, ah, weapon of choice. Zombie uh, apocaly- apocalypse. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm asking this for Yaz because uh, she, uh, I said, what should I, what are some things I could ask uh, Patty? Mm-hmm. And she said, uh, zombie apocalypse, what's his weapon of choice? <laughs> I said, right, I'll ask. <laughs> depends, on, de- depends on where I am, depends on how long, de- there's a lot of factors. But in general, I would say, uh, can I only have one? Uh, a short rifle, a, a short assault rifle. In this case, it's correct. So I would want to have a a, a short rifle, AR-15 style. Uh, it's in my opinion, it's the it's the it's the best style of rifle. It's the best. Um, it's you can you can maintain it very well without having any any special tooling for it. Uh, so a short uh rifle with an intermediate cartridge, lar- light uh large magazine. That's what I would want. Simply for the factor of being able to take more out in, in well, one go or that's what? that's number one number two you can also use it for hunting if you have a scope for it ah, um yeah. you could uh use it for to defend your to defend your house from maybe other survivors who yeah. uh who, who who didn't prepare for such a situation or are in a less fortunate situation uh zombie apocalypse we're talking about you <laughs> could you could use it properly for um for uh, gathering supplies from other people, for example, because you could uh, you could um, shoot from a distance to to acquire their supplies, for example. Uh, so yeah, do you play COD or anything like that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, I'm ask, I'm, I'm being asked this question quite often, and and I said no, I'm, I've never. I've, I've when I was younger, I played a few video games, but not not really, and not not excessively. Patty, is, look, meeting you has been like a revelation because you know. It's so easy to have these negative um, connotations and these negative images mm-hmm. of, of anyone who's involved with, with weaponry and guns, mm-hmm. in particular, professionally. And I just, it's, it, it's for me to sit down with you face to face and, and have this done officially, to, to clear, to demystify the whole thing, mm-hmm. I think it's very important. Because mm-hmm. you're not what I expected. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't expect anything. I met you in the store and it's just like... You know, I think if if uh, I I personally think that I could turn many anti gunners uh, or uh, not just turn them because turn them would mean that they would l- relieve their convictions without actually being uh, being without actually knowing otherwise. I think that most people who are afraid of guns, there's a lot of people who who are just neutral to guns who say uh, I I don't know anything about private gun ownership and um, I, I, and that's perfectly reasonable. Mm. However, um, I think I could turn most people who th- who who dislike guns um, into into people who don't dislike them anymore just by telling them the statistics. Uh, there you go. Same yeah. with same with the war on drugs, in my personal opinion. So yeah, yeah. I know this. Yeah, this is, that's a topic for another time. I mean, but that but is a big driving factor when you think of uh, the, the danger in Melbourne, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. I mean, knives, uh, guns aren't available. If they were, I mean, it's the drugs in the streets that cause the human behavior to be extreme mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. the need for drugs the the turf wars so on and so forth the the, uh, the obtaining of these things in circles that are you know illegal mm-hmm. cause the problems yes i think also that there's a, a mental um, illness uh, level of things that are also causing causing a lot of problems in terms of human danger it's, and, and maybe guns uh, the scapegoat for a lot of this. I think mm-hmm. we've got to look underneath that and see. Mental illnesses, uh, especially if you look at countries like the United States where I don't know how many, but <laughs> way too many people are, are being are being put on drugs. Ritalin, uh, the the uh, Adderall or what they call it. Adderall, yeah. All the all the drugs that those students are on, for example. Yeah. They, they, because that's, that, in my opinion, the, uh, uh, these, these, um, 
these uh, psycho, how do I call it? These med- this medicine for for psychological problems is in many cases there is people with proper ADHD, not proper, but yep. there's people with ADHD who this really actually helps. And things, I'm yeah. not I'm not in any way, shape, or form criticizing that whatsoever. Mm. What I am criticizing is that what we do nowadays is the the modern form of lobotomy, where we yeah. f- where we find a where we think we find a, pro- a a simple solution for a very complex psychological problem. Exactly. Uh, which uh, w- w- or if there is even a problem, young students are not supposed to be sitting in a classroom for eight hours a day. They're just not supposed exactly, to. Exactly. Yeah. My personal opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think uh, that. Um, Putting them on drugs fosters new sorts of psychological problems with them, and um, uh, mm-hmm. giving them these drugs is the easy solution to a problem that would need to be addressed by either uh, proper psychological care with counseling and not with drugs, mm-hmm. and on the other hand, with just not forcing young people into a classroom for eight hours a day, which yep. are n- where they're not meant to be. Yep, exactly. As an as a teacher, I can totally back that up. You've been all around the world, yeah. Most of the, oh, I've been to many been places. To you haven't been to Australia yet. N- not, I have not been to Down Under yet. Yeah, I've been to Down Under. Well, not right. Right now, I don't know if I want to be, but <laughs> <laughs> give it a few years. Wait till the military queue. Think um, it's going to happen? <sighs> you know, it's funny because um, we haven't. We, we're seeing scenes back home that I've. I haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. I think it, at, at any point in history, this is the closest it's get. It's it's more. Div- the country is more divided than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. People have said that about America in the last few years as well, I argue. But like, it's definitely since COVID times, it is more divided now than I've, I've ever seen it. So hopefully they'll get this shit together. Hopefully things will just, you know, will improve in terms of the numbers and that with COVID. Were you affected with COVID, with the whole uh, situation? Yes. Um, I've seen uh, an increase in demand in firearms. Yeah. Uh, ah, really? General insecurity in the world always leads to the people. I don't know if consciously or subconsciously, always leads to an increase in uh, in um, uh, in the the need uh, for for firearms mm-hmm. in people. I think it's more subconsciously. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, uh, the I, I've on the other hand, the demand in Germany, for example. Uh, lowered just due to technical reasons, for example, due to shooting ranges being closed, so new shooters couldn't get their required training in that they uh-huh. need, and yeah, 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 these these sorts of things. Uh-huh. And you've um, so when you travel around, mm-hmm. is it Europe? Because you, you bounced from America back here, because you went to America and came back, and then you went here, and then I've, 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 where, I tra- you're going to Switzerland where tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to Poland. That's right. You're going to Poland tomorrow. Poland. I'm just business partner. I have, I have a lot of business partners all over the place yeah. who I just like to personally visit with. I think it's just a, a craze of mine to to want to be um let's see to want to be want to meet someone in person when doing business with them. And that's the rather than just do the with. online thing. Yeah, I'm 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 old. Traveling around must be uh it's not as easy as you used to be these days. No, as long as you're vaccinated, and I'm a definite supporter of vaccinations. You're a German. Uh, your passport's German? Yes. All right, so, yeah. so you have that access all around Europe. I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say. But uh, uh, but you're Hungarian? My parents. Your parents are Hungarian. My so you have a Hungarian. special place in your heart for Budapest. Uh, yes, I absolutely do. I love this city. Uh, I spend as much time as I can here also. Have you been out? Have you been out to some of the places? That, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Where, where do you like going? Where many times. Well, um, different. usually um, I, I have a small circle of friends, which it was difficult to accumulate because I grew up in Munich. I uh, I didn't have any... I only had family here in uh, here in Hungary, which are mostly comprised of old folks, so <laughs> they're not really the group to go out with. <laughs> um, so, But I've now amassed a small circle of friends here. Cool. And um, usually wherever they want to go, I'm like, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm on vacation. You you guys tell me where to go. <laughs> well, I reckon we should wrap up and we should go grab a beer at, at Hof probably. What do yeah. you reckon? Gladly. Now, um, uh, we are going to... Oh, man. I'll go chat to, to Benzo after that. Hey, Patty, let's do this again, huh? Gladly. All right. Gladly. Maybe we can go to the uh, to your um. What, what do you call it? Your your site. Your my your warehouse. F- oh, you can see my factory. Your factory. Yes. Yeah. And we could check that the sh- out. The shop. You could the say. Shop. Yeah. The yeah, shop. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Gladly. Yeah. I would gladly like to show you the the manufacturing process. Demystify the whole thing. A firearm yeah. is a, is a is a, is a, 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 a an item made of steel and steel, a little bit of plastic and uh, and and aluminum or an AR type rifle which we manufacture. It's not like a like a, a bunch of like mystic mi- mystery material. It's <laughs> yeah. It's a machine it's like a me- anything else. It's a mechanical device. Nothing else. You wanted to leave um, leave uh, the the podcast with something to say to to wrap up. What would that be? And it doesn't have to be something political or no, dramatic. No, not, not like, at all. What do you What do you want to leave it with? 
and this applies this applies to firearms but it applies in general in life uh don't jump to conclusions before you make any decision about anything look at the numbers look at them thoroughly and then have an opinion right. cool, cool i think that's something good to leave it with isn't it yes yes perfect. <laughs> Now let's go get a drink and fire some fucking guns. Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man.